Time for your vaccination. This is going to hurt you, not at all, actually. Guys, I wanna talk about the future of vaccines, and there's so much to say that we're going to do two episodes about it. In this one, we're really looking at vaccine delivery, and to really understand the importance of it, we need to backtrack a bit. When Edward Jenner first proposed using cowpox to immunize people against smallpox, he ushered in a brand new era of medicine, and he called it vaccination. He named it after the Latin term for cowpox, vaccinia, and the name stuck, just like most of us end up getting stuck with various needles whenever we go in to get vaccinations. The basic way the vaccination works is it introduces a small amount of a weakened or dead pathogen, a bacteria or a virus, into a person's bloodstream. Then that person's immune system kicks into gear and fights off this would-be infection, and it learns in the process. So if it ever encounters that same disease in the future, it can fight it off effectively. But isn't there a better way of getting it than just a needle through the arm? Well, we're working on it. Researchers have already developed and distributed nasal vaccines for influenza, for example, and some are administered orally. And we're probably going to see a continuation of that trend in what are called mucosal vaccines. And this is really cool because it could provide localized resistance to certain diseases and in the process, give our entire body more of a generalized resistance to that illness. Or how about a vaccine through a patch? Now these patches have tiny micro needles that are less than a millimeter long, and they're made up of polymer, sugar, and vaccine. When you apply a patch to a person's skin, those needles puncture just the very top layer of skin. It's said to be nearly or completely painless. The CDC and our friends at Georgia Tech have been hard at work at this patch technology. One of the really interesting things about it is it could increase accessibility to vaccines. One, you don't need the expertise of applying a hypodermic needle in order to administer this. And two, it doesn't require all the other materials you would use in a regular vaccination. There are no needles, no syringes. There's no need for a sharps disposal box. You don't even need sterile water, just the patch. A related issue is called cold chain management. You see, a lot of viruses only remain viable if kept below a certain temperature. But there are parts of the world that don't have good cold storage options, so how do you get the medicine to people who live there? One way is by making more robust vaccines. Researchers at the National Institutes of Health worked to create a silk-based stabilizer that makes vaccines more resistant to higher temperatures. In fact, they were able to show that a vaccine remained viable even when exposed to temperatures as high as 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Meanwhile, there's another technique that involves using a very thin membrane, coating that membrane with a vaccine, and then covering it all up with sugar glass, making it a solid storage form. Researchers have shown that this approach is resistant to temperatures up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit for six months or longer. Meanwhile, when they tested this against a control group of liquid vaccines, they found that half of their samples would die within a week. So the future of vaccine delivery is really promising, and I find it inspiring to see how they're becoming more accessible to greater numbers of people around the world. We could be saving millions of lives here. And that's about as forward thinking as it gets. But I've got a question for you guys this week, and it's a doozy. How would you solve the problem of global distribution of vaccines? Keeping in mind the limitations we've talked about on this episode, because this is how we solve the world's problems, guys. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks to Toyota for sponsoring the show and making it possible. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that little like button for me and join the Forward Thinking Think Tank by subscribing to the channel. And after all that, check out these other amazing videos of how awesome our future is going to be right over here. <laughs>